Alright, all praise is an honor to Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Alright, that's the most high and his son. Alright. And uh double honors to the apostle of GMS, elders. Alright, and um shalom to all the Akim. Alright. We're gonna do a video here. We're gonna actually do two videos. The first one, we're gonna focus in on the color of, of the Lord, alright? And his nationality, because in 2016, you have a lot I don't give a fuck about other nations, but you still have a lot of our people. Mainly the elect that haven't woken up yet that probably still thinks that this is Jesus Christ. Well, what the world called Jesus Christ. But we're going to go into scriptures and a little bit of archaeology showing you that the Lord was a so-called black man. And, and using the scriptures to show you that he's of the tribe of Judah. All right. So if the brother can get Revelation 1 and 13 and actually start at the first verse. This is our Revelation chapter 1. Verse 1, the revelation of Yahweh Shai, which the Most High gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And we're living in a time where these things that shortly come to pass, which is martial law, death camps, all right, and ultimately the nuclear missiles. And the things that's also coming to pass is the elect waking up, all right, coming back to their nationality and ultimately coming back to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, which that's the Most High, Yahweh. Okay, and his son name, which is Yahweh Shai. All right, now you have other camps like Nathaniel 7 who, who, who um, make fun of the name of the Lord. All right, and say that you can call the Lord whatever you want. But deep down inside, that nigga know he's off. All right, they, 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 come on, man. Who else? Who else plays with the name of the Lord? Oh, what's Bubble Eyes? You know, Ahia. Come on, man. Yeshia. Nigga, you don't know how to speak Hebrew? Yeshia is Isaiah, nigga. All right. But let's go on. It says, And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. All right. Now let's drop down to the 13th verse, brother. Revelations 1 and 13. Oh, you know, no, hold on a second. Let me get the 7th verse. Revelations chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Yeah, Yahweh Shai is coming in clouds. What is those clouds talking about? It's talking about the chariots. All right, let's hold that. Let's go to Psalms. Yeah, and there's another one thing though, but definitely get that one. Go ahead and read, brother. This is Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Who layeth his beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot? Beautiful. All right, that's the chariots. The chariots are with the world called UFOs, all right? Which are there, which UFOs mean unidentifiable. But Esau and his elites, they know what they are. Those are the chariots of the Heavenly Father. All right? They've been seen since this earth been in existence. All right? Go ahead. It says, Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. All right, beautiful. Now let's go back to Revelation 1 and 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Yeah, so those two Roman soldiers that actually was dumb enough to stick that uh, spear in the Lord's side, the Lord is coming back for them, all right? That's personal, all right? So that means, in the reincarnation, that means those two guys are here today, which that's a scary fucking thing to be them. I am thank the Lord I'm not an eater, my first and foremost, and especially not them, because they're going to get their ass handed to them. All right, go ahead. It says, And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so... Uh, I'm on. Yeah, and even us here in the truth, we're going to be, uh, I'm, I know I, I can't speak for everybody, but I know I'm going to be afraid, all right, if I'm alive then, <laughs> to see that chariot up in the sky like that, and an angry king size, Yahweh Shai, all right? See, you know, you, all, you know, these people, you see, let's be real here. This image right here, all right, some of it is it's whitewashed, all right? But this image of a so-called white Jesus Christ, it, you know, this this is an image of fucking um, white. It, it represents white supremacy. All right. Furthermore, it's a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because the Lord never looked like this. All right. I mean, you can see a little bit of the brown. These are actual braids. If you look real close, you can see these are actual braids. Edomites don't have hair like this. But the the, the image is whitewashed. All right. But we're gonna go in here. We're gonna show you the images where you could. It's clear that. It, it backs up everything the scriptures is talking about. 
Go ahead. Now let's go to the 13th verse. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. The Son of Man is speaking about who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. Now if you look at this, is there any way we can get a little bit closer to zoom in? So the brothers can see. So you can see here, right? These they, they at, from far away they look like Edomites, but when you get closer, you can't you can't fully whitewash their faces. You can see the brown, and not only that, look at the hair. This is woolly hair that these these brothers have here, man. So you can't fully wipe away the images. All right. See, this is the whitewash image of this nonsense. This is called white supremacy, man. All right. Mm. See that? That that that's to make and not only that, that's to make you Jakes feel bad about yourselves, man. Keep you further not only in slavery, but in depression too. Not even depression about your financial situation, your living situation. You in a depressed state about your your, your race. You even you hate the fact that you are that you're a, a so-called black man, not realizing you're one of the children of Israel. Alright? But this makes you hate yourself before even saying about any um What's the word I'm looking for? Without any characteristics, just based on for looks. You see another Jake, see another Jake, you're like, oh, fuck this nigga. But when you see an Edomite, you, you, uh, what was this? I was watching the 30 for 30 where Shaq was talking about he was he missed class one day in college and his coach came up there, some Edomite named Dale, waking him up. Shaq said he thought he was dead. He thought Dale, he thought his coach was God. He thought he actually, Shaq said he actually thought he died and God was actually talking to him. But now you can clearly see these images right here. These are gold coins. Look at the nose. Look at the beard. You can see that, you can see that this, they chipped off the rest of this nose because nobody knows look like that. Okay. All right. They chipped off the rest of it, man. Look at that. These are braids, man. All right, Esau don't have hair like that. These are these are not. This is not stringy hair. These are braids. If you look at it, these are thick. All right, that's braided hair, man. Like the braids that Jake wear nowadays, man. All right. Now this right here, this picture right here. Read the caption. All right, this is a this is a Edomite actually white woman white, washing the image of Yahweh Shai. All right, you can see the brown right here. Look at all this. This is an image. All right, they whitewashing. We have this. At the camp, at the camp on the um, what do you call that on the on the sign? But this is the actual book from where that sign, from where that uh, from where the sign is made up. Okay, it says it says iconoclast whitewashing an image of Christ and a crucifixion scene. That's what this is. It's actually just came out and said they whitewashing the image. Wow. All right. Now look, this is supposed to be Mary, but look, look how dark she is. Now why the hell would this? Why the hell would she be that dark if she wasn't that dark? If she was really a so-called white woman, why the hell would she be this fucking dark? Okay. Oh man, yeah, here we go. Look at this right here. You tell me that I don't look like a Jake. It's white. It's whitewashed, but you can still see that image of that hair. Mm -hmm. You can still see those are braids. That's not stringy dog hair, because you can see from even when you can look at it, you can see this that hair got body to it. All right, that ain't stringy dog hair. All right. I mean, there's tons of images in here, but like I said getting to the point well, look at this man this is whitewashed but look wait a minute you see this uh, wow all right we get back to the scriptures so the so-called white man you got a lot to pay for man 
not only have you, you know, been overdoing it with the slavery on the Lord's people, you also made them hate themselves with this images of uh, white supremacy. Okay? That's why Jake always talking about if you if your hair ain't nappy, you got good hair. You know, that's why the movie School Days uh, um, highlighted the fact that you got light-skinned Jakes versus dark-skinned Jakes, which is stupid. Let's give Jeremiah 14 and 2. And then we're going to go back to Revelation, the first chapter. Uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 14. And, and, and you know, you niggas are stupid, man. You fall for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Whether you light skin or dark skin, if you dark skin, why are you getting on a brother because he's light skin? You think that he can't help? No, hey, look, man, you can't help how to the shade, the color you are. I mean, you you can help if you're fat or skinny, to a certain extent, okay? Because why I'm saying that? Because you got three, really, there's almost four body types, but the three body types are endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph, okay? Endomorph is a is basically your, your power lifter. Yes, he's big bone. That that statement, big bone, is actually true because his bones are big. Then you have the the marathon runner. Those guys are what you call ectomorphs. They're very thin. The most they'll ever weigh is probably maybe a buck fifty at that. Then you got the uh, mesomorph, all right, which is me, this brother right here, like in the middle. You know, big arms, big legs, but thin ass waist. You know what I mean? Do we, do, we, do we choose that? No. The Lord put us here, all right? In the sperm, all right? And, and, <laughs> that's amazing, man. One, excuse my language, but one nut you bust produce what you see right here. <laughs> one piece of sperm produces what you see right here. All right, so let's get back to um, Jeremiah 14 and 2, then we're going to go back to Revelation, the first chapter. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. So the scriptures say Judah mourneth. Now who's Judah? You so-called Negroes, right? Now we understand when the 12 tribes escaped from the Assyrian, the 10 tribes broke free from the spirit, through the spirit from the Assyrian captivity that you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi left, all right? So the other nations was calling everybody Jews, all right? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, man, okay? So Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. And the gates represents the leadership, all right? Because gates, what is a gate? A gate is supposed to be a hedge of protection, okay? So our leaders are supposed to protect us. How? By teaching us this word. Teaching us what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do on, his, on this earth, all right? That can piss the Lord off, all right? That's what, that's what the hedge is for. That's, what they, that's why they call gates, all right? Because they're for protection. Jesse Jackson and Al Charlatan, Farrakhan, and all these other high pro, basically high profile celebrities that's supposed to be a, a source of spiritual advisement. All right? Those guys don't, first of all, they don't give a fuck about Jake, man. All right? And I mean it in the grimiest sense, man. Like, I don't give a fuck about you simple ass monkeys out here killing themselves, but I care enough that I'm gonna make sure that what I'm teaching is the truth. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't gonna steer you the wrong way. And I'll tell you, I don't need your fucking money. I work. We, we work, man. I mean, you're supposed to send in your tights, but we don't, we don't give a fuck about that. You're supposed to do that, man. Go ahead. It says, they are black onto the ground. Now, that word black is a Hebrew word, all right, kwadar, all right, which means dark skin, all right? Now, how come you're pastors and preachers? Now, if you're a pastor and preacher and you're teaching the Bible and you don't know how to understand some Hebrew and Greek, man, you shouldn't be fucking teaching, man. Plain and simple. Plain and fuck. You should not be teaching no scriptures, man. What you should do is sit your ass down somewhere and shut up. All right? Just shut the fuck up. Don't say shit. And you don't know shit. Going to these theolo... Finish that up. We're going to get... Yeah, because I want to go into that theologian school bullshit real quick through the scriptures. Go ahead, brother. It says, They are black onto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is going up. Yeah, and the cry of the rest of the 12 tribes have gone up, man. Yeah, because Esau is killing us, man. All right, and then the other nations are feeding off of us, man. You got Ham in the in the in the in the, in the um ghetto doing what? Giving hair weeds to the nigger woman. 
You got Moab in the, in the neighborhoods in the East Coast giving that fucking cat fried rice shit. In the West Coast, you got Ammon, all right, called known as Koreans over there oppressing them jakes over there in, in California, all right, in their little, um, you call those uh, convenience stores, all right. You got Elon making money off of you, all right. You got all these other nations making money off of you. Yet, when you got a jake who have a business in the hood, that nigga got to close after a couple years, man. And then you get mad if he if he opens a business catering to white people. Why? Because, let's be real, niggas don't want to spend shit. Niggas go into a discount store and still want a discount. Like, nigga, the shit says discount on the fucking sign. How much more of a fucking discount are you going to get? But then, that's, a, that's, a, yo, that's a nigga for you, man. Grimy nigga, man. Just grimy. I mean, just, like, just, like... Just, you're like, sometimes I look at these niggas like, yo, man, if I was a cop, I would shoot these niggas, man. Like, yo, why don't you pull your pants up, man? I saw this shit last night while I'm work. I'm like, man, if I had a gun and I was a cop, I would just shoot this nigga in the back, man. Just, just for walking around like that. I know it's not against the law of the Lord, but goddamn, nigga. Nobody want to see that shit. First of all, that's a homosexual uh, uh, thing, man. That's what the niggas in jail do to show, to show niggas that, yeah, he like it like that, man. And then you niggas run around the street like that, like that shit is cute. That shit ain't cute. But go ahead, back to the topic. Right, it says in the, oh, back in Revelations? Yeah. This is Revelations chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, mm -hmm. and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. That's right, that's talking about that war belt, the image that you see at camp, you know, all the time. That's, that's coming out of the scriptures, all right? Not that shit that you see everywhere, which is Caesar Bourget. And I'm gonna keep saying this, man. I'm gonna buy one of them shits, I'm gonna keep it outside the crib, and when I need to take a shit, I'm gonna use that to wipe my ass with it, man. That's the kind of, that's how I feel about that picture, man. That's how every brother, I know the brothers feel that way, but that's how every Jake that ain't wake up, when you look at that thing, you're supposed to be like, man, this is bullshit, man. Basically, that's white supremacy, man. That's white supremacy. That's basically what that is. Because first of all, your average Edomite don't believe in God. So for the, for the fact that you don't believe, for the average Edomite not to believe in God, and then when he says he does, like it tells you in the scriptures, he, he must look like me. Go ahead, bro. His head, verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Lord's hair, white, meaning fully gray, and wool is the texture of his hair. It ain't say doggy, stringy hair, man. Wool, got body to it, man. All right, look just like a sheep. All right, just like the wool you get off a sheep when you trim. Look at a sheep when they trim a sheep. It looks like when you go to the barber shop, man, and you see a Jake getting his throat trimmed off, man, getting the Caesar. It's the same thing, man. It's just that it's white. The color is white, fully gray. Go ahead. It says as white as snow. I know, we do got black sheeps out there, okay? When you look at their hair, that shit look like what you call nigger naps. Nigger knots. I forget how they... I haven't heard that term in so long. Nigger naps. I forget how they call it. Go ahead. It says, as white as snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire. Meaning the whites of his eyes was bloodshot red. It tells you that in the book of Genesis, he's going to be red from wine. Then it tells you in Matthews, he's a wine bibber. All right? Which you niggas had a problem with. Meanwhile... You, you have a problem with the Lord drinking wine, but you fucking some other man's wife, though, committing adultery. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say it like that. You got a problem with the Lord drinking wine, but you, you having sex with some other man's woman. You, you, you robbing and stealing from one another, man. I tell you straight, you shouldn't even go out there and rob an Edomite right now. Why? Because you're going to jail, nigga. Go out there and be stupid. Like these three niggas, <laughs> you know, these three niggas like two weeks ago. <laughs> These niggas, these three niggas walk into a convenience store to rob it. Only one of them had a mask on. Now I'm looking at the shit on the T. I'm like, yo, I'm laughing my ass off because I'm like, yo, really? Two of you, three of you motherfuckers going to a, a convenience store. How much? First of all, they ain't even Grand Larceny, man. Grand Larceny is 10 G's and up. They came off for like two G's. I, I forgot. It, it was a low amount. When, I, when they said the amount, I was like, these niggas are stupid. Came off with, come on, man. Two grand between three people? Really? Come on, man. That's a joke, man. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. And his feet like onto fine brass, mm -hmm. as if they burned in a furnace. So the brother, so Yahweh Shai was dark skinned. 
like the brother sitting next to me, or some of the various, you know, guy Apostle Kabar, dark skin like that. Like you know, the elder I not, dark skin like that. Why am I not saying people in Hollywood or the rap industry and music industry that you can probably know? Fuck them. Them people sold their soul to Satan. So I don't want to even mention their names. All right? So I'm a, if I'm sitting next to a dark skin brother, I'll use that brother as a reference point. I'm not using none of you fuckers in the, in the, in the hip-hop industry or the movie world or any other that entertainment world. I would say 99% of you are faggots and lesbians, and the other 1% of you are murderers, blood sacrifices to get where you at. All right? Which that shit is that's just despicable, man. You're going to kill a family member just for some fucking FRNs, man. That, that, that's crazy, man. That's some psychotic shit, man. That's something the Edomite would do, man. That's, I'm serious. That's something the fucking Edomite would do. Go ahead. It says, um, and his voice as the sound of many waters. All right, now let's go to Revelation 2, verse 18. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in uh, Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of the Most High, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. There it is again. So in case you missed it the first time, it's going to tell you, he, basically he's a dark-skinned brother. All right, now let's go to Hebrews. For it is evident, God, I got it. 7 and 14. God. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. What is that talking about? That means the Lord come out of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Yeah, why? Because at that time, the sons of Aaron, which were Levites, played the part of the priesthood. Not even every Levite could be a priest. All right, You had to come out of that royal lineage, man. Like, out of, you had to come out of out of the line of Aaron, man. All right? Um, now, we're going to wind down a little bit because we want to get into this topic. Give me um, Daniel 7. Get Daniel 7 and 9 first, and then let's get Daniel 7 and 10, and then we're going to go into our topic. This is uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Yeah, the thrones cast down was the rulership of these other nations, man. They're going to be thrown out of power. The Lord is going to evict them out of out of their seat of authority. Like how you get evicted notice from, from your landlord, that's the way the Lord is going to evict Esau and these other nations, through war, all right? That's why all these nations are going at each other, man. All right, go ahead. It says, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Now, Ancient of Days is speaking about the Father himself, Yahweh. Ancient of Days mean no beginning or end of days. Now, if you really want to get deep, try to figure that shit out. I'm not. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So the, the Heavenly Father himself got a giant fro, giant willy fro. Now, what the hell would that tell you? That tell you the Lord is so-called black man, man. All right, I forget what movie it was where they showed you some of that. Bruce Almighty? No, uh, it's an old movie. I think it was Green, uh, Green Pastures. That's one of them. The other one is um, and it's in oh man, I think it's either Wizard of was it Wizard of Oz when he was Oz? It was no one of them. It's a movie called Time Bandits. Now this is probably like early '80s. I was a kid. Movie Time Bandits. I remember when it came on TV. They talked about the supreme being, and when they finally, because they was run, they was running from the supreme being, which was crazy, because they were dipping back in, in the fourth in different times. They was in the medieval times, and they was in the B.C.s, then they came back into the '80s. They was trying to basically run from them. And then there's a scene in there where they where they, they finally can't run anymore, and you see an image of the Lord, and it was like the same image we read in here. You see the throne, you see the wool, then. Then they make him do the fucking Edomite with a bald head and fucking no hair on his fucking face, man. Yeah. But they, but they, where they got it from? They got it from right here. I remember that movie specifically. Go ahead. It says, and his, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and, and, we, and his wheels as burning fire. If you watch the movie Wizard of Oz, you see this, that same description with the fiery flame. 
and the um, wheels of fire, burning fire is the same. They got it from right here, man. All right. Now let's get Daniel's 10, 5, and 6. Daniel chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. Yeah, that's Yahweh Shai. All right. Go ahead. It says, His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as the lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in the color, like in color to polished brass. Yep, so there you go again. So people that say color's not in the Bible said that his color was like on the brownest brass, man. Which we already read. That it was it was burnt like it was burned in the furnace. But the key words you keep seeing there again is burn his brass. Alright? And it's and it's telling you the Lord is a dark skin is basically a dark skinned Jake, man. Alright, out of the child of Judah. Alright? Go ahead. And the voice and the like it, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Alright, beautiful. Now we're gonna go into this. Alright, this is the topic is basically um basically murder rates. And how Esau would be inflating them statistics and shit to to further drop to make it like you niggas are fucking well some of you niggas are animals I, I'm not I'm not even gonna lie a lot of you some of you good th two thirds of some of you niggas are straight up animals man I wouldn't even keep you in the cage I'll just kill you and these niggas are, some of you niggas are worthless a good amount of you well all you all niggas are worthless all right all you, especially you grimy ass niggas man robbing old ladies for fucking for the little $10 they got in their pocket, man. Like, what was this kid? It was like two weeks ago. This dude tried to rape a 70-year, a 79-year-old woman, man. Like, come on, man. Now how, now, how the fuck, now, how the fuck I'm supposed to say, oh, well, you know, I can't have, come on, man. I got to get it on you, man. Yo, you shouldn't even be raping a 29-year-old woman because you're going to jail. Like, even when you read in the scriptures when, you know, like that time in the book of Judges, all right, when Benjamin was going off and doing that sodomite shit, and damn near a lot of them got killed. So they told some of the Benjamin brothers that were still left, all right, go out and catch you some of them. It's not, it ain't telling, that's not how you really, you don't go out there and be like, yo, you single? Really? Yeah, grab up and start fucking the right <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you bugging, B. Because <laughs> the way it was in the ancient world, you know what I'm saying, your pops set, the, you know, set it up. You know what I'm saying? Like how it happened with Joseph. He couldn't wait until after the wedding feast. You know what I'm saying? To make it public. So he was, you know, doing his thing with Mary before it was made public. That was his wife, man. All right. But let's get back into this. All right. Now this is coming from um, Atlanta Black Star. All right. It says nine facts that show white on white crime far exceeds black on black crime and how media outlets conceal it. All right. Got this right here. It says, <clears throat> Edward, it says, Edward Wyckoff Williams, an author, columnist, and political analyst for MSNBC, conveyed a reality that many do not seem to know is real. Williams wrote for the riot. He, Williams wrote for the riot. It says, no, for the root, sorry. Wrote for the root. It seems that the media in general and white American society, white American society is particularly prefer to focus on crime perpetuated by African Americans because it serves as a way to absolve them from the violence, prejudice, and institutionalized discrimination in gay, in, in, engendered for generations against blacks. It offers a buffer against responsibility, a way to shift blame and deflect cause and effect, but the truth and numbers tell a different story. At the heart of an increasingly violent society is not a subculture among blacks, but the violence and criminality of many Americans and whites in particular. No one seems to speak about this. Okay, it says, it goes on, I'm going to go to the next page. All right, because basically the media is to, is to basically keep Jake um, down and make, you know, keep demonizing Jake. Because if you even get some Edomites come from Europe, they'll be like, well, damn, you know, what we see over there is like these kind of images. And when they come over here, they see Jake that can, you know, hold a sentence, you know, saying that uh, articulate, whatever. They like, wow, they shocked. Because Esau, you know, he demonizes Jake in the, 
in the media. And let's be real, some of you niggas don't help yourselves either, man. Walking around with your pants hanging off your ass. <clears throat> Running out here robbing, killing, and stealing from each other. All right. Now it says uh, page two. It says statistics are cut and dry. They do not lie. According to the FBI's most recent homicide numbers available from 2011, a staggering 83% of white murder victims were killed by fellow Caucasians. 83%. So Edomites was killing Edomites. All right. 83% of murders committed by blacks, only 14% of were whites. All right. And because whites are the majority in the country, which we know, the, that's a bull, that's bullshit. Hold on. Let's get that in Hosea. Hosea 1. 1 and 10. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. That means there's billions of Israelites. Fuck that million shit. All right. There's a lot of us. All right. Go ahead. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. Now, you might say, well, how you could, well, what's another way you can prove that? Esau had five sons. And basically, the nation of Edom was brought through for five sons. There was 12 sons of Jacob. 12 versus five. Think about that. Esau and five sons make up that nation of Edom. The 12 sons of Jacob make up the nation of Israel. You do the math. Hell, even when you, if you want to take Ishmael and Esau, right? Five sons of Esau. Ishmael had 12 sons too. But they're princes. They're not, you know, they ain't with us. But he, that even basically showing you that Esau is a small amount of people, man. Esau is really the mi minority. But he fucks, he flips it around and make Jake feel like, oh, this, there's not that many of us. The bullshit. Man, the streets are crawling, crawl, everywhere is crawling with Jakes, man. Even if they got confusion in the face, that's still a Jake, man. All right? So it's too many of us, man, for you to try to number, man. Go ahead. It says, cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. Where would that be at? In, the, in North America, man. All right, definitely other like in Europe and other parts, but mainly here in America, because this place, man, we're demonized and vilified, man. All right, and yo, BET don't help, man. That come, I mean, come on, man. One oh, what is it? One oh six in Park, stupid shit like that, man. And you, and you wonder why niggas don't? You wonder why niggas don't get no respect out here, man? You niggas make yourselves look like monkeys, man. Straight up monkeys. Niggas, niggas wear two belts and still have their pants hanging off their ass, man. Nigga, what was it? The other day at camp, man, we sit, we stand there. Somebody, niggas was just smoking, burning weed down there. I'm like, damn, nigga. We just walking around doing niggerisms, man. And then you get mad when you when you get locked up. Why, you shouldn't be mad. You should be mad at yourself for being stupid, man. Go ahead. It says, uh, said unto them, you are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of... Of the living power. That's right. Read the last verse. It says, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. Now, why I say it like that? Because remember, after the death of King Solomon, Rehoboam took Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and, and Jeroboam took the uh, the rest of the tribes, starting with Ephraim, Manasseh, and Gad, Reuben. All right? So the truth, the truth, the, the nation of Israel was split into two at that time. You had the northern kingdom which is basically Ephraim and the other tribes. And you got the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Go ahead. Uh, for great shall, so like it, and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up, up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Jezreel, right. Yajariala, which Jezreel, in the Hebrew, Yajariala means seed of the power. All right. And we are the seeds of the power. So now back to the, it says here, and because whites are the majority in the country, there are six times, now here's the thing though, it says there are six times as many whites as are blacks. That means they commit the most murders. So if you're saying there's more of you, Esau, there's more Edomites, guess what? 
That means you commit more crimes. That means you commit more murders. That means you commit more rapes. All right. You know, you really, I mean, goddamn. You ain't got to be that smart to figure this shit out, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, man. It says, um, this could be viewed as startling to many, especially whites, because Harley is white on white crime dissected in the media. As an example, Time Magazine's Joe Klein wrote an entire column recently on crime focusing on, on the black community and calling it a social disaster. But there was no mention that whites overwhelmingly are killed by whites, which was typically of which was typical of media outlets. I Meaning they ain't gonna tell you that. They basically wanna keep Jake vilified. It says Williams wrote the term black on black crime is destructive, uh, racialized colloquialism that perpetuates an idea that blacks are somehow more prone to violence this is untrue and fully and fully verifiable by fbi doj and census data yet fallacy is also fallacy is so fixed that even african americans have come to believe it see that yep. you get told a lie so much you, you start believing that shit it says indeed respected columnists like george will never examine crime by whites do not use the racialized phrase white on white crime and give the impression their lives are at risk because of blacks. The truth, taking FBI data from 2010, whites kill, listen to this, whites kill 3,252 times, which was 4.6 times more than the number of whites killed by blacks. If you got anything, just, you know, definitely bring it out. Okay. You can get, matter of fact, give me Genesis 27, verse 38. Because this was, because Esau was, said he was going to live by his, thy sword, thou shalt live. I mean, he's going to be a man of murder, man. I mean, it's one thing to be a warrior, it's another thing to be a murderer, all right? It says, whites are responsible for the, hold on a second, it says, whites are responsible for the vast majority of violent crimes. According to, have you ever heard this? It said, I'm going to repeat it. It said, whites are responsible for the vast majority of violent crimes, according to the FBI. With respect to aggravated assaults, whites led blacks two to one in arrest. Oh, hold on a second. You say niggas are rapists? It says, in forcible rape cases, whites led all racial and ethnic groups more than two to one. So yo, that means Esau be raping his own. He be raping women more than Moab, Ammon, Ishmael, Elam. <laughs> like damn, man. Now why? I, I already know why you don't let this shit out. It says and and oh, yeah, la, yeah, and Larson and in larceny theft, whites led blacks again more than two to one. All right, larceny means what? Grand larceny is ten G's are up. All right. Not that fucking going to a bodega, robbing that shit, coming off with two grand between two, between four motherfuckers, man. Come off with two grand between two, four motherfuckers. Meanwhile, that ain't even enough for your fucking bail money, man. All right? You ain't even got no money for bail, nigga. Come on, man. It says, Williams asks, this given mathematical truth, would anyone encourage African Americans to begin shooting suspicious white males in their neighborhood for fear they'll be raped? Assaulted or murdered, all right. Y'all also go watch that movie again called Natural Born Killers with Wesley uh, Wesley Harrelson and Julia Louise Dreyfus, a Edomite couple that was all about murder. All right, you got that in Genesis. Come on, this is uh, Genesis chapter twenty-seven, verse thirty-eight. And Esau said unto his father, "Has thou but one blessing, my father?" Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Yeah, cause Esau know he don't, he don't fucked up. You know what I'm saying? He knew he knew he was fucked up. You know, cause um, his mom, through the spirit of the Lord, you know, deceived his father and gave um Isaac the. I mean, Isaac was blind at the time, was old, and you know, you know, set it up where he thought. <laughs> 
Esau was Jacob and, and vice versa. But that was all set up by the Lord. All right. Go ahead. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So, you know, the Lord said, all right, man, stop crying, nigga. I'm crying like a bitch. You're going to have some you're gonna have some money. You're going to be all right. I mean, in other words, meaning you're going to have crops. You're going to have cattle, livestock. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. Yeah, the Lord going to bless you. He ain't going to... You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to have you in no drought. You know what I'm saying? He's going to rain let your crops grow. All right, go ahead. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Yeah, by thy sword, your killing instruments, whether it's a sword, gun, poisons, because Esau poisoned the shit out of you. All right, what is that, arsenic? He, he, and yo, these Edomites be killing each other for that fucking inheritance money, man. Throw arsenic in the fucking <laughs> You're like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, how you gonna kill your moms, B? Like, dude, how you gonna kill your moms for money? Like, come on, man. You gonna kill your moms for money? Nigga, come on, man. Yo, hold on, man. Yo, <laughs> there's one incident where, yo, dude, dude, father. Yo, now this was some bullshit. Now, this dude, father. Now, this Edomite was a 31 year old man. His father was hitting him off with $500 a week, Damn. which is like, yo, if that was my pops, yo, you even looked at my father wrong, you go missing. Don't worry about what will happen to you. You go missing. You giving me $500 a week for nothing? Shit. Anybody even looked at my pops wrong, that motherfucker go missing. His father, you know, was like, yo, look, you know, you're 31, you know, you know, you need to work yourself. You'll get a job and shit. But I, I got you. Instead of 500 a week, I'm going to give you 300 a week. That motherfucker lost his mind and killed his pops. Because his father wasn't going to give him $500 a week. He's still, but hold on. You're still getting $300 free dollars. $300 of free money. Tax free. Given, given to you. Without even being paid back. Your pops like, yo, head nigga, here. Like, nah, that ain't enough, dad. Hey, shoot the motherfucker. Come on, man. Yo, guess what? In the kingdom, there ain't gonna be no cold case files. You kill each other for whatever fucking reason, we will show up at your door that night, man. Okay? There ain't gonna be no due process. Due process my ass, man. We gonna come over there through the spirit. We gonna, cause we gonna be the judges, man. We gonna be the judge, jury, officer, all that. The Lord is gonna be in us, man. You kill somebody without just cause, yo, we, we serving you, man. And it's gonna be in public, man. We gonna have our children there. We're going to hang you up. We're going to fuck you up. Light you on fire. Throw darts at your nuts. All right? Hit you. Go back to the ancient world. Stone you, man. I'm talking I'm going to pick up some big rocks, man. I'm aiming straight for your fucking head, man. And it's going to be public, man. Like the way you used to hang Jake in public with all your children. We're going to do that shit to you, man. You gonna be drinking wine like ah look at this eat of my ha 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 come on down nigga price is right bitch we gonna be having yo we gonna have a, we got jokes on you now what the fuck you think we gonna have we gonna have some mad jokes on you man I got several thousand jokes on the motherfucker right about now go ahead verse forty and by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother mm -hmm. and yeah and that did happen because Esau did serve us. All right, hold on one second. Let's get that. Second Kings eight, eight and twenty. I got it. Second Kings eight and twenty. It says, "In his day, in his days, Edom re revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves." Right now, you can go into Samuel where it tells you that uh, David set garrisons in Edom. All right, basically military bases to keep them Edomites under control. All right, but this is proof. It says, it says in his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. So to be under the hand of somebody, that means you was in slavery. Okay, so now it's getting back to the article. It says the the Bureau of Justice Statistics found that compared to blacks, whites were more likely to kill children, the elderly. Family members. <laughs> yo, damn. Yo, yo. yo, how you killing your mom? I got, I got, I'm sorry, I gotta keep on. How you gonna kill your moms, B? Cause, yo, cause she ain't wanna buy you a pair of fucking skippies. Or she ain't wanna, she ain't wanna give you no chocolate milk. She said you, you need to lose some weight. 
You gonna kill your moms? Okay, now that's fucked up, man. How you gonna, yo, hold on. How you gonna kill your moms, B? <laughs> yo, come on, man. How you gonna kill your pops, nigga? Yo, you gonna kill your pops? Really? Man, you, hey, if you wanna kill your younger brother, older brother, hey, 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 whatever, man. You gonna kill your father and moms? Nigga, come on, man, really? It ain't even that, come on, man, stop it, man. You gonna kill your moms, B. Hey, that's wild. Yo, you even might say, do that shit in the kingdom? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry for the family member still alive. We gonna give you closure right there that night. We gonna kill that motherfucker. We gonna chop his fucking head off, man. It says, yo, whites were more likely to kill children than elderly. Yo, how you gonna kill a 90-year-old oh, old man for money? Killing your, killing your great-grandfather so you can get their inheritance money. Come on, man. Killing family members and their significant others. And you say that, Jake, we be beating our wives and shit? It's telling you right here that Edom might be beating their wives more than Jake. All right, it says they commit more sex-related crimes. More rapes and sodomy are committed by Edomite men. All right? It says gang-related crimes and more likely to kill at their places of employment. When's the last time you heard about a Jake going to, going to the fucking uh, Mickey D's and shooting that shit up? Tired of working there. I haven't heard about that shit, but I know he, he, he saw do that shit. Hell, even Elon. When, when the last time you heard Elon going to a 7-Eleven and shoot that shit up? All right? Columbine. Oh, perfect. Columbine High School? Absolutely. <clears throat> What you got there, bro? Uh, Psalms 58 and 3. Mm -hmm. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Break that down. Uh, Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And uh, the wicked, pursuant to Job 9 and 24, is these so-called white people, you Edomites, as the general is going into. From the moment you, you, you conceive these kind of thoughts, these negative demonic forces yeah. and thoughts are embedded in you. You got... Uh, Edomites from a young age that's th thinking of, I don't like my mom, I I'm a slice of throat, <sighs> shit like that. I never even thought of no shit like that before. I don't even think of that sh no shit like that in my teenagers through now, man. You don't kill your father and moms, man. <laughs> Damn. God. And it says they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. And that's one thing uh, these so-called white people is known for, speaking lies. There it is, the statistics. That the uh, the generals bring it out is is on a worldwide web for everybody to see, but what he does, he's gonna lie and twist his media, and turn it around and Jake and what Jake's gonna do, uh, pursuing those in four and six that lack of knowledge and that wisdom they don't have, they're just gonna follow after the so-called white man, whatever he say go, while we out there on the streets, the highways and byways, telling you this and you look at us as your enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it says oh the monster effect. Let's get this eat my bitch on. They made a the the mon the movie monster that was um played by that little sexy hot eat my bitch Shalice Theron was based off this eat my bitch right here. Let me uh, zoom in on that. Yeah, this bitch straight up murderer, man. Shit. And she was executed. All right. Says indeed, respected columnists like George Will never examine crime by whites, do not use the racialized phrase white on white crime, and give the impression their lives are at risk because of blacks. The truth taken FBI data from 2010 whites kill, listen to this, whites kill 3,252 times, which was 4.6 times more than the number of whites killed by blacks. If you got anything, just, you know, definitely bring it out. Okay. You can get, matter of fact, give me Genesis 27, verse 38. Because this was, because Esau was, said he was going to live by his, thy sword, thou shalt live. I mean, he's going to be a man of murder, man. I mean, it's one thing to be a warrior. It's another thing to be a murderer, all right? It says whites are responsible for the, va hold on a second. It says whites are are responsible for the vast majority of violent crimes according to have you ever heard this it said i'm gonna repeat it. it said whites are responsible for the vast majority of violent crimes according to the fbi with respect to aggravated assaults 
whites led blacks two to one in arrest. Oh, hold on a second. You say niggas are rapists? It says enforceable rape cases, whites led all racial and ethnic groups more than two to one. So, yo, that means Esau be raping his own, he be raping women more than Moab, Ammon, Ishmael, Elam. <laughs> like, damn, man. Now, why? I already know why he don't let this shit out. It says, and, and, oh, yeah, yeah. And Larson and in larceny theft, whites led blacks again, more than two to one. All right, larceny means what? Grand larceny is ten G's are up. All right, not that fucking going to a bodega, robbing that shit, coming off with two grand between two between four motherfuckers, man. Come off with two grand between two four motherfuckers. Meanwhile, that ain't even enough for your fucking bail money, man. All right, you ain't even got no money for bail, nigga. Come on, man. It says, Williams asks, this given mathematical truth, would anyone encourage African Americans to begin shooting suspicious white males in their neighborhood for fear they'll be raped, assaulted, or murdered? All right? Y'all also go watch that movie again called Natural Born Killers with Wesley, uh, Wesley Harrelson and Juliet Louise Dreyfus, an Edomite couple that was all about murder. All right? You got that in Genesis? Got it. This is uh, Genesis chapter 27, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Yeah, because Esau know he don't, he don't fucked up. You know what I'm saying? He knew he knew he was fucked up. You know, because um, his mom, through the spirit of the Lord, you know, deceived his father and gave him... Um, Isaac, the, I mean, Isaac was blind at the time, was old, and, you know, were, you know, set it up where he thought <laughs> Esau was Jacob and, and vice versa. But that was all set up by the Lord. All right? Go ahead. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So, you know, the Lord said, all right, man, you know, stop crying, nigga. I'm crying like a bitch. You're going to have some money. You're going to be all right. I mean, in other words, I meaning you're going to have crops, you're going to have cattle, livestock. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. Yeah, the Lord going to bless you. He ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? He ain't going to have you in no drought. You know what I'm saying? He going to rain, let your crops grow. All right, go ahead. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Yeah, by thy sword, your killing instruments, whether it's a sword, gun, poisons. Because Esau poisoned the shit out of you. All right, what is that, arsenic? He, he, and yo, these Edomites be killing each other for that fucking inheritance money, man. Throw arsenic in the fucking <laughs> Yo, like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, how you gonna kill your moms, B? Like, dude, how you gonna kill your moms for money? Hey, come on, man. You gonna kill your moms for money? Nigga, come on, man. Yo, hold on, man. Yo, <laughs> there's one incident where, yo, dude, dude father... Yo, now this was some bullshit. Now this dude, father, now this Edomite was a 31-year-old man. His father was hitting him off with $500 a week. Damn. Which is like, yo, if that was my pops, yo, you even looked at my father wrong, you go missing. Don't worry about what will happen to you. You go missing. You giving me $500 a week for nothing? Shit. Anybody even looked at my pops wrong, that motherfucker go missing. His father, you know, was like, yo, look, you know, you're 31, you know, you know, you need to work yourself. You know, get a job and shit. But I, I got you. Instead of 500 a week, I'm going to give you 300 a week. That motherfucker lost his mind and killed his pops. Because his father wasn't going to give him $500 a week. He's still... But hold on. You're still getting $300 free dollars. $300 of free money. Tax-free. Given, given to you. Without even being paid back. Your pops like, yo, here, nigga, here. Like, nah, that ain't enough, dad. They shoot the motherfucker. Come on, man. Yo, guess what? In the kingdom, there ain't gonna be no cold case files. You kill each other for whatever fucking reason, we will show up at your door that night, man. Okay? There ain't gonna be no due process. Due process my ass, man. We're gonna come over there through the spirit. We gonna cause we gonna be the judges, man. We're gonna be the judge, jury, officer, all that. The Lord is gonna be in us, man. You kill somebody without just cause, yo, we put we serving you, man. And it's gonna be in public, man. We're going to have our children there. We're going to hang you up. We're going to fuck you up. 
light you on fire, throw darts at your nuts, all right? Hit you, go back to the ancient world, stone you, man. I'm talking about, I'm going to pick up some big rocks, man. I'm aiming straight for your fucking head, man. And it's going to be public, man. Like the way you used to hang Jake in public with all your children. We're going to do that shit to you, man. You're going to be drinking wine like, ah, look at this eater, man. <laughs> and you saw, come on down, nigga. Price is right, bitch. We're going to be having, yo, we're going to have a, we got jokes on you now. What the fuck you think? We're going to have, gonna have some mad jokes on you, man. I got several thousand jokes on the motherfucker right about now. Go ahead. Verse 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and that did happen because Esau did serve us. All right. Hold on one second. Let's get that. 2 Kings 8. 8 and 20. I got it. 2 Kings 8 and 20. It says, in his, day, in his days, Edom re revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. Right now, you can go into Samuel where it tells you that uh, David set garrisons in Edom, all right? Basically, military bases to keep them Edomites under control, all right? But this is proof it says, it says, in his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah. So to be under the hand of somebody, that means you was in slavery, okay? So now... It's getting back to the article, it says the, the Bureau of Justice Statistics found that compared to blacks, whites were more likely to kill children, the elderly, family members. <laughs> yo, damn. Yo. damn. Yo, how you killing your moms? I got, I got, I'm sorry, I got to keep on. How you going to kill your moms, B? Because, yo, because she didn't want to buy you a pair of fucking skippies. Or she ain't wanna she ain't wanna give you no chocolate milk. She said you you need to lose some weight. You gonna kill your moms? Okay, now that's fucked up, man. How you gonna yo, hold on? How you gonna kill your moms, B? <laughs> yo, come on, man. How you gonna kill your pops, nigga? Yo, you gonna kill your pops? Really? Man, you hey, if you wanna kill your younger brother, older brother, hey, 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 whatever, man. You gonna kill your father and moms? Nigga, come on, man, really? It ain't even that. Come on, man. Stop it, man. You're going to kill your moms, B. <laughs> That's wild. Yo, you eat mice that do that shit in the kingdom? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry for the family member still alive. We're going to give you closure right there that night. We're going to kill that motherfucker. We're going to chop his fucking head off, man. It says, yo, whites were more likely to kill children than elderly. Yo, how you going to kill a 90-year-old oh, year old man for money? Killing your, killing your great grandfather so you can get their inheritance money. Come on, man. Killing family members and their significant others. And you say that, Jake, we be beating our wives and shit? It's telling you right here that Edomites be beating their wives more than Jake. All right, it says they commit more sex related crimes, more rapes and sodomy are committed by Edomite men. All right, it says gang related crimes. And more likely to kill at their places of employment. When's the last time you heard about a Jake going to going to the fucking uh, Mickey D's and shooting that shit up? Tired of working there. I haven't heard about that shit, but I know he he, he saw it do that shit. Hell, even Elon. When when the last time you heard Elon going to a 7-Eleven shoot that shit up? All right. Columbine. Oh, perfect. Columbine High School. Absolutely. <clears throat> What you got there, bro? Uh, Psalms 58 and 3. Mm -hmm. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Break that down if you want to. Go uh, Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And uh, the wicked, pursuant to Job 9 and 24, is these so-called white people, you Edomites, as the general is going into. From the moment you, you, you conceive, these kind of thoughts, these negative demonic forces yeah. and thoughts are embedded in you. You got... Uh, Edomites from a young age that's th think, thinking of, I don't like my mom, I, I'm a slice of throat, <sighs> Damn, shit like that. I never even thought of no shit like that before. I don't even think of that sh no shit like that in my teenagers through now, man. You don't kill your father and moms, man. <laughs> Damn. God. And it says they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. And that's one thing uh, these so-called white people is known for, speaking lies. There it is, the statistics. That the uh, the generals bring it out is on a worldwide web for everybody to see. 
But what he does, he's going to lie and twist his media and turn it around in Jake. And what Jake's going to do, uh, pursuing to Hosea in 4 and 6, that lack of knowledge and that wisdom they don't have, they're just going to follow after the so-called white man, whatever he say, go. While we out there on the streets, the highways and byways, telling you this, and you look at us as your enemies. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, um, it says, oh, the monster effect. Let's get this eating my bitch on. They made a, the, the, mon the movie Monster that was, um, Played by that yep. little sexy hot eating my bitch Shalice Theron was based off this eating my bitch right here. Let me uh, zoom in on that. Yeah, this bitch straight up murderer, man. Shit. And she was executed. All right. Got me. Good enough. All right. I'm gonna read some of this. It says, amazingly. It says amazingly, according to the FBI statistics, sorry, according to the FBI stats, women committed 36% of the murders committed by white people against white people. 36%, that's a lot. Women uh, who kill, that's a show on the Investigation Discovery Channel. There's another one called Deadly Women. If you watch the Oxygen Channel, there's a show called Captured and, and um, Snap. Where it talks about Edomite women. I mean, every now and then you might have a nigga woman that, that do that shit. But 90, over 90% of the women on those stories are Edomite women, man. Be killing their husband, man. I mean, straight up mur execution, bro. All right? It says, uh, this number is a far higher, is far higher than you see in black women. Now, I'm going to say this. Black women kill a black man by fucking, by mind games, taking you to court for child support. All right, and all other shit. Yeah, she does kill. There, there's cases of nigga women killing her, man. But it says it's telling you right here. It says this number is far higher than you see in black women. It says Aline War Warnoras, who was found guilty of killing six men, and was later executed in a Florida prison. This is the picture we just showed you. Is Wally. Is, is a widely regarded as the country's first female serial killer and was the subject of the 2003 film monster okay it says uh that was played she was played by Charlize Theron it says 10 name it says um list verse names 10 females serial killers and all are white so the top 10 female serial killers are all Edomite women so what does that tell you, man? You better hey, you better watch that eating my woman you date. That bitch is the devil. You you know, you sleep, that bitch might take a gun and shoot your ass because you think you might be fooling around with some other woman. All right? It says President Barack Obama and none of the previous, none of the white previous presidents had ever spoken a word about the phenomena of white on white crime. Vox, under the headline, white on white crime is out of control, says, indeed, Looking back on America's political icono iconography, there are disturbing trends toward the glorification of white violence. It says, peer inside the U.S. Capitol building and you'll find a monument of Confederate, of Confederate Jefferson Davis, the leader of an insurrection that caused an unprecedented quantity of, of violent white deaths around the country are white mass murderers of black in particular who are moralized, all right? In other words, basically saying that a lot of these, <clears throat> Jake, a lot of these Edomites that has held the highest regard were murderers of Jake. One of the favorite uh, characters from the Western stories, Doc Holliday. Everybody loves Doc Holliday. He hated niggas, boy. He was racist as hell. If you go back and look up his history, he couldn't stand Jake, man. But you got niggas talking like, yeah, Tombstone, Doc Holliday's one. Mm -hmm. Nigga, if Doc Holliday was around right now, he would shoot you in the head. He would straight up shoot one of you niggas in the head. <laughs> All right, it says, um, oh, there we go. When gang-related killings are referred to the news, are referred to on the news, they treat it as an almost exclusively black problem. However, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, for the period of 1980 to 2008, which was 28 years, 
from the period of 1980 to 2008, a majority, 53.3% of gang homicides were committed by white offenders. And the majority of gang homicides victims, 56.5% were white. You got a picture of the neo-Nazi skinheads here. It says, it says crimes committed by whites often are explained in the media as deviations of the individual. He was such a, yeah, he was such a quiet man. The community is shocked, but have nothing to do with race. Yeah, like every time some uh, either might do some shit like that, oh, he was such a quiet guy. He was a nice guy. He loved children. Meanwhile, this guy was, oh, what's that guy's name, that Edomite? John Wayne Gacy. This guy, this Edomite, used to lure boys into his house, have sex with them, kill them. You know how they found them? There was a distinct stench coming from his house. You know what it was? It was bodies. He was burying the bodies of them boys he was burying in his fucking basement. They found about 20 <laughs> Yo, this motherfucker, that motherfucker was a demon. They found like about 20 bodies in this crib, man. Bones, man. All right? It says, crimes committed by whites are often... Crimes committed by whites often are explained in the media as deviations of the individual. He was such a quiet man. The community is shocked. but have nothing to do with race. But crimes committed by blacks or Latinos are somehow attributed to race, with little exception. Gangbangers from South Chicago have somehow become a symbol that black men are to be feared. But there is no same characterization that one could attach to the brutal murders committed by neo-Nazi skinheads. All right? One more page and then we're going to close up. All right, you got anything? Just this, is, uh, God. this is uh, Lamentations chapter 4, verse 21. <clears throat> Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. You go ahead, bro. Uh, I'm gonna continue to verse 22. It says, "The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins." Uh, in a, pretty much in a nutshell, you Edomites, everything you're doing is being recorded by the, the heavenly Father's eyes, which are the angels. There's there's countless sins and, and wickedness that brothers don't bring out week in week out. You're like, damn, how wicked could the white man get? Well, guess what? Esau is doing this. Esau is doing that. He got he got uh he uh, uh one other thing that always uh sticks in my mind is like you go and get a candy bar. Well, there's a certain amount of uh bug shit that could be in your candy bar. You know, all these types of atrocities and the main atrocity, first of all, bring us over here in cargo slave ship. All these things are tallying up for what? That you also was gonna drink of that cup. Like the general's going into, you're going to get heavy, uh, heavy slavery, the, uh, the judgments and the statutes of the Heavenly Father, which you're not going to be able to keep. We're going to enforce them immediately on your ass, man. All right? So, and, and the sins, it's like it. Mm -hmm. And it says, and, um, he will, and he will discover thy sins. So all these, all these uh, laws, and statutes, and commandments that you eat mice are breaking, you're going to account for it uh, in the kingdom of heaven, every single last one of them. You got a lot of... I this topic is uh, vast because I have a few websites that, you know, with the statistics and everything, come back and do it again because, um, like I said, I got Arsenal up here. That's, no wonder you see why ESO want to get, the elites want to get rid of the internet because it, it, it reveals their wickedness, man, and it helps wake up the elect. <clears throat> Last page of this, the poverty argument says experts and analysis have consistently crafted theories on crime based on income and employment levels. The less you make, the more likely you are to commit crimes. The theory goes, but who came, who came up with that? That's Esau, all right? It says, but the number of murders committed by white people, specifically in the United States, according to Vox, cast doubt on this. The white population in America is, consistently, is considerably richer than the national average, and yet there are more white murderers. Well, that's the end of this uh, page right here. And that's just one fucking page. All right? One, 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 one episode of information showing you how these devils be doing, man. One, one this, this is one. All right? Actually, I just want to get one more. Fuck that. If you got, you know, just, you know, whatever you got. Why you, I was about to end it, but I was like, there's one more I want to get out. One more. 
All right. Now, bear with me. Now, this is a site. It's called uh, legendsofamerica.com. Real quick, I want to, because um, this just talks about the Hart brothers. Now, the Hart brothers wasn't actually brothers. They were cousins, all right? But they were the first, quote, unquote, serial killers in American history. It says, earning the dubious distinction of being the United States' first known serial killers, Mackay Big Hart and Wiley Little Hart were murderous outlaws who operated in Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, and Mississippi in the late 1700s often referred to as the Hart brothers. They were actually cousins who often passed themselves off as brothers. Both of their fathers were Scottish immigrants who had settled in Orange County, North Carolina. Makaija Hart was born to John Hart and his wife, while Wiley Hart, who was actually named Joshua, was born to Joshua's brother, William, and his wife. Soon after the arrival of the Harps in America, they changed the spelling of their original name to Hart, Harpy to harp, it's like it. it says growing up near each other, the boys soon took up the nicknames Big and Little Harp, as Wiley was much smaller than Makaija. The two left North Carolina in 1775 for Virginia, intending to find jobs as slave overseers. <laughs> See that? Slave, slave overseers, man. All right. However, the American Revolution interrupted their cause. I mean, their career. Now, we understand that some of you Scots are niggas, all right? But when you hear some of the details of these, you're going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> That's some East Source shit right here. The pair sided with the British, but their interests seemed to be more in violence and criminal activities than serious patriotic duty. Patriotic duty. Along with other like-minded irregulars, they apparently thrilled in the activities of burning farms, raping women, and pillaging the American patriots. When Little Harp attempted, <clears throat> all right, it says, it says, um, when Little Harp attempted to rape a girl in North Carolina, he was shot and wounded by Captain James uh, Wood. However, he survived. In 1780, the Harps joined the regular British troops and fought in several battles along the North and South Carolina borders. The next year, they left the army and joined with the group of Cherokee Indians raiding settlements in North Carolina and Tennessee. North Carolina and Tennessee continuing their pillaging, taking revenge on Captain James Wood, who had earlier wounded Little Harp. All right. The pair had, says, um, the pair kidnapped his daughter and another girl named Maria Davison. The women served as the two, as the wives to the harps. So in other words, they kidnapped these bitches like, nah, fuck it. Y'all gonna be our wives. The pair along with the, uh, the pair along with the brutalized women and four other men, they began to make their way to Tennessee. During the trip, a man named Moses Doss had the audacity to be over concerned for the brutalization of women. For his concern, he was killed by the Harps. The group settled in the Chick in the Cherokee Chickamauga village of Nijack, located southwest of Martin Day, Chattanooga, Tennessee. For the next dozen years, the Harps, along with their wives, led the Indian lived in the Indian village. During this time, both the captive women became pregnant twice, and their children were killed by their fathers. So when the women had got pregnant, sometimes they killed some of the babies. This is some Edomite shit here, man. It says, after the British surrendered at Yorktown in 1781, the Chad McCook and the breakaway band of Cherokee continued to make war on American patriots, and the Harps were only too willing to help them, fighting in, C fighting in the battle of Blue Licks, Kentucky, on August 19, 1782. In September 1794, the Americans planned to take to take the offensive against the Indians at Nick, Nika Chak, but somehow the Harps got wind of the attack and fled because they was looking for them. With fled before the Patriots wiped out the village, the Harps and their women then settled down at a new camp nearby 
where they stayed in the where they stayed for the next nine months. Once again, the pillaging locals, once again, pillaging local villages in Tennessee. By the spring of six of night of seventeen ninety seven, they were living in a cabin. Uh, a cabin on Beaver, Beaver's Creek near Knoxville. It says, okay, it says, just over a year later in 1798, the Harps would begin their murder spree, one of the most violent in the nation's history. They first killed two men in Tennessee, one in Knox County and the other in Wilderness Trail. By December, they had moved to Kentucky where they killed two traveling men from Maryland. Unlike most outlaws at the time, they seemed to be more motivated by blood just then, more motivated by blood lust than financial gain, often leaving their victims dismembered, filling their, uh, filling their abdominal cavities with rocks and sinking them into the river. Yeah, okay. One more little bit. It says, next, a man named John Lanford, who was traveling from Virginia to Kentucky, turned up dead, and a local innkeeper pointed to the authorities, pointed the authorities to the harps. The criminal pair was then pursued, captured, and jailed in Kentucky, but managed to escape. Okay. When the posse, when a posse was sent after them, the young son of a man who was assisting the authorities was found dead and mutilated. All right, these guys was no joke, man. I mean, um, you know what? I'm going to just stop it for there. Y'all can look that up. But these, this is an example of Esau. One last, it says in South Carolina, John Graves and his teenage son were found dead in their home, in their, was found dead with their heads axed. And in Logan County, the Harps killed a little girl, a young slave, and an entire family who were asleep in their camp. In August, a few miles northeast of Rush, Russellville, Kentucky, Big Harp killed his daughter by bashing her head against a tree because the baby was crying. So that's an example of Esau, by thy sword, thou shalt live. Murder, the man of murder, man. With that, we um, say death to America. Death to America. Yeah, and um, shalom to, you know, well, praise and honor to Yahweh, Shimei, Shai, double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS. Shalom, Wallachian. Shalom.